Hello and welcome back again to the Programming Bootcamp. Hi, Laura. Hi. Uh, in the previous video, if you watched it, uh, we talked about uh, the SciPy um, the ecosystem and they mentioned a couple of these uh, modules that some of them are part of the SciPy ecosystem. Some of them are just unrelated, but uh, used many times in, in scientific uh, Python. And, uh, and now we're going to co continue uh, with the the, the two chapters that I thought then that we can cover, but uh, we couldn't. So now we are covering the, I'm looking for the SciPy, and then below it is the, the biology part and the chemistry, which are both relatively short and uh, probably um, absolutely incorrect. Um, so uh, BioPython, I already mentioned that the, that the BioPython project is, uh, is about various things that you can do with biology, basically. So it's a one project, many libraries inside. Okay, uh, it's on GitHub. So I have a link here. Uh, GitHub is a, is a website where um, a lot of open source projects are being developed, let's say. So we mentioned, uh, I told a little bit about version control. Uh, the most popular version control is called Git. And uh, if you'd like to store your, all your work, all the history of your work, which is in Git, in some public uh, place, then you put it in GitHub, for example. There are a couple of others, but GitHub is the most popular one. So this is basically the, all the, like the, the slides, uh, maybe I remember all of my slides are there. So the same way, uh, the, all the source code of, of BioPython is here and all the history of it and, and so on. And I'm showing it primarily because in case you encounter some issue or that here is what you, where you can report it, or here's where you might uh, try to uh, submit your improvement to it and, and so on. And basically every project has its, uh, its um, version control system somewhere. And here there is a link to, uh, to, the tuto to a tutorial to, to, to this package. Okay, so you can uh, get much more, much deeper in, in there. A couple of things system, 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 things that it can do. It uh, can handle various sequence formats, so uh, FASTA and FASTQM, FASTQ and EMBL and whatnot. Uh, for me, these are mostly just uh, sets of letters. You have a lot, a lot more understanding in them. So I put in some links to explanations because I needed them primarily. Uh, but uh, if someone is watching this and does, doesn't know what, what are these specific formats, then, um, then you can go ahead. Actually, hmm, let, me, let me look at it. So if I go to the Wikipedia page of it, I don't know if you can see it, yes. So inside a FASTA file, for example, it's a FASTA file is basically a text file that we talked about there are text and binary files. So a FASTA file is basically a text file, but in, internally it has a specific format. So you know exactly where is, I have no idea what are these, uh, this is probably the, the name of the, the sequence and this is the sequence itself and, and whatnot. So, um, and the various, um, I don't know, do you know what are these? Um, not all of them, no. Uh, these are all sequence uh, identifiers. So some of them mean that this, this is, that's gene, uh, yeah. the specific genes, um, amino acid sequence. So it's actually, these are not DNA sequences. Okay, uh, whatever. Sorry. Okay, for me, it's just sequences. sequences. Uh, yeah, I mean, sequence, sequence. Um, and the same format is actually used for, for DNA as well. So yeah. um, it, the, the, the format itself is just uh, so that you have a line uh, specifying the, the details of the sequence, and then yeah. you have a sequence. Exactly. That's, that's, that it's a very simple format. Yeah. So, so of course, so it's a simple format, and and you could write your own program just to read it and and uh, take it apart and have it all the data. But this BioPython uh, project already has libraries to do that. Okay. So that's that's that is the whole idea that you don't have to do this all this in the end not really interesting work. I mean. Um, Okay, so how can uh, a couple of things? How what I found? Okay, <laughs> and then uh, it will have a lot more meaning to you. So there is this module, uh, the bio dot sequence. Okay, so first of all, installation. Okay, before we get there, actually, uh, 
If you're using Anaconda, you might have already installed, but if not, then you go to the command line and you say pip install and uh, bio Python. I think that's it. Okay, and then it will go uh, to some website, and this is how it's it's installing. Uh, if you're using PyCharm, then in the PyCharm you can do the same thing, and you can install uh, this PyCharm. Uh, uh, if you're if PyCharm is mapped to the right uh, version of of Python on your system, um, then that doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, because you have uh, will have uh, access to it in both ways. Okay, so this is just now installing this black line aggress when it was when it was downloading the file and then unzipping and, and installing in the right location and if this was a, a package that was dependent on something else then it you would see that the, like a cascading installation of various things so once we have installed it uh, you can say from a bio dot sequence. So basically, we haven't seen, I think, this, this kind of uh, package, but the bio, pa bio Python package is so big that it was divided into sub uh, packages. And then this is how you get to the sub package, which is called sequence or SEQ. Okay. And in there, there is a, a function basically, which is also called SEQ. So I imported that one. And uh, then I can use that and give it to give it a sequence, okay? And then it represents uh, and give it a, a variable name, okay? And then this variable name now represents that sequence, okay? And then from this sequence, you can start manipulating it, like just print it out or get the complement of it or the reverse or various things that I have that have, have probably some mathematical meaning to me and uh, some biological meaning to you, okay? Uh, here is another one, another sequence that uh, I, I guess I copied it from somewhere, so I hopefully it's right, which is an RNA sequence, and then again you can do all these uh, things with it. Okay, and um, I think here what I've tried to show is that if in case you're uh, giving it some incorrect uh, sequence, okay, then it will, it will um, at least at this point it will comp uh, complain that it can't uh, compute uh, because it's a uh, whatever, okay? You'll explain it when, when uh, if, if you would like, okay? Um, okay, so that's, that's one thing. That's when you just have your handmade sequence, whatever. You get some sequence somewhere. Uh, the other thing is that um, I encountered that sound that, that's so interesting is this uh, database, the NCBI database that's familiar to you? Yeah, it's it's a fairly standard place to look for all sort of biological information. Yeah, so so actually um, a little more, more background. It, I teach this, this, this course, this boot camp in, in the Weizmann Institute and there are lots of people with scientific background and then there is this the, the biologist, but even between them, some of them uh, totally like daily work this is like daily work for them and others that have nothing to do with it and they 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 still under the same roof uh, at the end so okay so there there is this da database and i think we can uh, link, link click there and then one thing that uh, you probably do is that you probably search here okay well, would you like to okay let's let's first search for something have, do you have any idea what to search for now? Well, you can search for any, I don't know, if you want to get a sequence, maybe a gene. Yeah, let, let, yeah you can, we can. Okay, we, we can, uh, let, let's put it uh, aside for now. I have a couple of other sites and then we can get back to the, to, to, to this place. So um, I had, I just took two examples that I found uh, here uh, on the, um, I found somewhere, uh, they are, I put them on some public place. I, I, I'm actually not I, they, someone else put there. Uh, but these are, the, uh, this, uh, this is actually a FASTA file that's located somewhere on, on that GitHub thing. And uh, just for, uh, for an easy uh, example. Okay, so this is this, this FASTA file. And then this is the, sorry, that was the URL. So 
if I get there, this is the this is the address. This is also called the URL, okay, uh, of the the file somewhere on some web server. And um, what this code does is, um, hmm, it's actually an interesting uh, code. So you're using a couple of interesting things here. Uh, the first thing is, so th this is the, this is like the main code. Let me go over this. And that is going to get from this URL that content, and then uses uh, um, the 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 bio some module in the BioPython Python library in order to uh, read it in, into memory. Okay, so reading a faster file. So let's see this one. This is the process file part. So assuming I already have a file. Okay, and I give it the file name, and I also give it the file type, which is I think the type can be either FASTA or GeneBank, which are just different formats. Uh, okay, so I give it. Then I can use the uh, S the SEC IO uh, module that I imported from the BioPython library, and I get dot parse, and I give it the name of the file, which is local on my disk. Okay, so this is. Uh, in this, okay, this code will have two steps basically. The first that we download the file from the internet. And the second step is that when I have already have the file on my disk, then I read it into uh, memory. Okay, so this function gets the name of the file and the type, and then uses the sick IO parse to read in that file. And you can then use this, whatever this returns, you can iterate over it and get uh, each record uh, on its own because this contains or can contain multiple sequences right and then it will print out the id of the sequence the sequence itself um, or a, actually a representation of the sequence which i think only a shorter version of the sequence otherwise it would be just way too to print it and uh, the length of the sequence just so we can see it so Let's let's try to run this and see if it works actually. So examples science read faster. Examples science and then I run in read faster. Okay, so okay, it it printed out uh, um, the ID, the uh, representation of the sequence, which is just a short short version of it. I guess this is the beginning at the end, maybe I don't know. And then I just printed out the lengths of it. So we'll, we'll know that it's longer, okay? So what we have here is the first two steps. The one in the script, one is fetching the downloading the file from the internet. And the other one was reading the file into the memory and going over each item. And so this one is the, the part that we go over each item, each record, each sequence. And uh, this part, which haven't, we haven't learned anything about this yet, so let's look at this. It gets the URL, so this URL, where the file is actually located somewhere on some other computer on the internet. And um, it will also get the name of a file that I would like to use locally. Okay, um, so um, because I, it's not necessarily the same that I have here. So I can come up with any idea. Then I use this module that's called requests, which is um, a fairly common module in Python to, uh, to interact with web pages, okay? You normally would open your browser, type in some address, and the, your browser will get to the server, download a page basically, and show it to you, and maybe embed some images. If you'd like your Python program to do basically the same, to go out and download the page or download the file, then one of the libraries that you can, you can use, the common ones, is, the, is this requests library. And the way it, it works is that you say request.get, and you give it a URL. And it basically, at this point, goes to the internet and downloads that page. Um, and that page, which is just the either just the HTML or in this case, in our case, it's gonna be just the content of this file because it's raw. Uh, so there's no HTML here, that's just this, this content, okay? And uh, we get back uh, an object, which is a response object. That's why usually it's called res something. 
And in, re in this response object, we can ask uh, the, the st status code of the request. And uh, these kind of requests have their own idea of what the status code can mean. Basically 200 means success and all kinds of other numbers mean various issues. Okay, maybe the URL was incorrect. Maybe I, the internet connection is down. Maybe I don't know, whatever. Maybe the, any problem. So basically I'm checking if the status code is different from 200. And in that case, well, you haven't learned about this, but I raise an exception. Basically, I, I, it's also called th throwing an exception, like it's throwing up your hands and say, okay, I can't do anything, okay? It's basically stopping the program from running, okay? These are the same expect exceptions that you would get if you try to divide by zero, okay? Just in this case, you, have, you, you write your own explanation, okay? And if that didn't happen, then we get to the this point where we we can open uh, uh, the file name that we got for writing and then write in whatever the res text is so res res status code gets this status code whether it's successful or not and res text is an actually content that you downloaded from the internet okay and then i save it to the to the file so basically this is the uh, this is the content of the file or now is going to be the content. And then there's the second step, I'm just reading from the file. And probably I could have combined the two, so I don't even need to save it in a file, just download and on the fly, which is already in the memory, parse the sequence. But I think I wanted this to, to have the, the separate part that assuming that you already have a file, what you do. And also because uh, um, you might have lots of these uh, uh, pages that you would like to download. And uh, you once you download it, and then later on, you will separately read them and parse them. And then you probably do that a lot more frequently. The first you download, I don't know, 100 or a 1,000 of these sequences or files, and then you start working on them, OK? And the, same, the second is the same exactly, just with a different uh, uh, file format which is a, uh, the extension is GPK and it's basically a slightly different format. Are you familiar with this as well? Yeah, um, the only like it has a lot more um, metadata species uh, uh, information in it. So it's it's actually encoded in the format, not just the sequence itself. But yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. So. But that's, that's the story, whole story. So uh, now you can automatically, with your Python code, read these things and start doing whatever transformation on, or research you'd like to go get, either on the sequences or, or on the metadata or whatever, the data. OK. So this is, was just a small example of that you can do this now programmatically. And then that's where I think we get to the, the searching of the, the nucleotides or sequences or whatever. And I think that was the, the idea that maybe we can just grab this uh, search. So this is something that we, you could, uh, I, these are totally meaningless to me, okay? Just text. So you can go, go to this uh, database and actually search for this. I think this is, this is how you can use this search manually. I mean, you don't even have to give it this many uh, things. It's simply, if you just know uh, yeah. a species name or the name of the gene that you're looking for, you type it in, you're going to find it there. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So this, I guess, this is whatever. Just having some search. Okay. What I'm trying, what I'm trying, trying to show is that um, without programming, you would come here, uh, do your search find the results and start downloading the FASTA file or the gene bank file or whatever information you, you would like to get. And just look, we have uh, 20 items out. So it shows 20 out of the first 20 items out of 544 results. And I copied it here because let's see how can we do the same, but programmatically, okay? So we import from this bio package again, which is the so when we installed it, pip install, it was BioPython, but when we import, then we import for bio. Sometimes there's a difference between the name that we install and the module that actually we are loading. 
So from bio, we import this entrance package, okay, library. I don't know what is what this stand for. And um, they apparently you apparently have to uh, configure your email, or they are asking you nicely to configure your email. I don't think that actually you need they they need it, but probably they ask it ask. So if someone is running too many queries or bad requests, uh, then they can contact that person asking again nicely that please stop uh, bombarding our system with with incorrect things. Okay, so it's just like. Um, Nicety, nicety on both sides. Um, and then uh, I just put here some term that that search term and uh, I use the e-search uh, function uh, tell it to search in the nucleotide database. So I guess here uh, you could pick the different databases and this is one that, one that we used. Um, and then you get the, the, the term. I don't no, so you will probably need to read the, what are these the data. So what is this ID type? Uh, no clue. Hmm? Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you can also tell how many items you would like to retrieve. And I, I think I didn't find really a debate to retrieve all of them or I, I don't know. And uh, so this is the, this, you get back something that we called here a handle and then uh, which I think this already downloaded all the data at this point. And then you can use another part of this entrance uh, package called read uh, that gets this handle. Uh, and then this gets uh, some more detailed data, I guess. Um, and, and from there you can get the how many results you get. So the numbers are slightly different here than, than on the website because it, it, this ran a long time ago. Okay, but if we run this search nucleotide, let's try it. Let's see what happens here. Right on, nothing like live demo. Search nucleotides, right? This was the one. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So it says 544, was this the same number? Yeah, okay, good. I'm happy that I don't have to try to explain why it's different. And then we get a list of uh, the IDs. So these IDs, I don't know, one of the IDs. The accession ID, right. That should be the ID type, ACC. Okay. okay. Ah, okay. Okay, so you get the, you get back how many records you have, the ID list, uh, the, and the actual length of the le record that you actually downloaded. And because I asked for 30, it gave us 30. Okay, out of the 544. So here, here it's to the 30. So just to clarify, this is not imitating the search here. Uh, but it, it accesses probably directly to some what we call an API, an application programming interface of this system. So if you have a website that has a database behind it, then uh, like this one, okay, they have a database and they're a website, uh, or you have, oh, okay, so they have a database and then they can provide two ways of access to, to main ways. One of them is a human friendly way that we have this UI, okay? Where you get there and you type in some browser, uh, something in, in, some information and search based on that. And the programming uh, interface, which is usually called an API, where programs can access this database. So if I had to write a program that access this UI, I would probably go crazy. I mean, sometimes we do this if we don't get an API. But, um, but then look at this, they have this message now, which is a pair, I guess, here for uh, last half a year. But this changed how this looks like. And we people can understand all this and we can uh, uh, read it or disregard it depending on what we, what we need. Uh, but if I have a program, then it suddenly gets all kinds of other data that doesn't know how, what, how to deal with, okay? Actually, this was something I wanted to ask. Um, so in a previous example, you were using, uh, you were downloading a file, right? Uh, making yeah. a file from the FASTA um, format sequences that, yes. that, that you had on a page. Um, 
but for instance, in the NCBI uh, page, if you look for the FASTA uh, sequence, it doesn't just give you an empty window with just a sequence. It, it looks like this now. Yes. And then there is a window with inside this website with the sequence. How would you be able to download that? Yeah, so so you could so you need the tools. So so you say you could use the same request library and you would get the same data, the same exact so you would get so if if I just uh, if I just use the request to download this page exactly now, I would get what you get if you click on uh, right click. Oh, I don't know how to do this in, in this which view page source. Yeah, view oh, page okay. source. Okay. And oh, each browser has a different uh, word for that, view, view source or something. So this is basically what's behind the scenes of this page. And your browser just takes this mess, let's call it a mess. It's basically HTML. Okay, this is what we call HTML, and displays part of it based on some definition of what we also call CSS. And maybe there is some code written in a language called JavaScript to move things around. So the, the browser does a lot of things. What a request would get, just this raw, raw, raw content of this. And then not something nice or so. You'd have to understand that from this, analyze this. And one of the biggest, biggest problems would be here that if the web website owners, the maintainers, decide that let's say they would like to add a comma between these because it looks nicer. Then suddenly your code will stop working properly because suddenly it would look for something different, okay? Or can break, okay? It's not that it will obviously break, but it can break. Your your code can break, and um, and uh, so in the first example, when we downloaded a single file, it was because we already had a single file somewhere stored. So it was easy. In this case, uh, we sh you should hope that this website has an API or that someone actually wrote a wrapper that hides all this difficulty of finding out and downloading things. And you can already use that module that someone maintains and fixes whenever the website changes. Okay, and maybe you will have to fix it yourself if the other person doesn't. But uh, but the, the the hope is that you that they provide an API, which which is um, a way and uh, that programs can talk to this website, and then they can the program can actually say, okay, return me that file. Okay, and. Um, or return, yeah, basically that. Okay, so they can they can uh, have this communication in a basically in a language that um, now it's not that difficult anymore to to you either because you already learned programming, but uh, something that you would not want to do as a human normally. Okay, you would want to use it for programming. Um, okay, so that's what we have behind the scenes, and this is this library just uses that API, I guess. Uh, to to access these things. So now you can now this is how I searched and then I had to close this handle. Mm, okay, so that's it. Um, uh, and then this is where we get where you you probably wanted to, to, to get here. So now that we search for something, let's download it actually. Okay, so here we have the entrance and the sec ID that we used already earlier. I get the email. I just picked an ID, which is, again, I have no idea what type of ID is. Is that some different type of ID, maybe not the accession code? Okay, one of the other IDs. Probably you can also use the, the accession, what, what was that access, accession code? Accession ID, yeah. Okay, accession. Probably you can use that as well. Okay, um, and then you, again, you tell it which database to look to search for or fetch from, okay, which database to use, uh, this ID that you're looking for, uh, what format you're looking for, I think. This is the gene bank format, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yes, this is the gene bank for format means. And um, I don't know what is this uh, retrieval mode probably, or I don't know. Okay, I guess these all, all these things have, so let's, uh, 
look for it if, if we are already here. So I just search for it and then um, let's try Python. And then you get to the documentation of this package itself. Okay. So now I that, that's that's what you, and then you can go and start reading the documentation. I mean, you know, you, you like reading the documentation. But yeah, so that's 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 what we have here. So I have a small some basic examples, and then you can go and and uh, fill all the the blanks here. So this uh, this I told it to fetch this specific. Uh, uh, file, I guess, or for a specific uh, data set. Uh, I get back this handle. And then uh, from this handle, I need to read. And that's how I get back the actual data. And then I can co close the handle. It's a little bit similar to a file handler. Just the way we operate on it might be, actually, it's the same, basically. On a file handler, you could also call read, and you would get back the whole string, right? So this is basically the same. Um, and uh, so now in this data, we have all the content that we just downloaded, okay, which is, which is in uh, GeneBank from format. So now what I did is just saved the data to a file, okay, and then I used the separate thing to read in the, uh, to take the file, the file type, which is now GeneBank, and then it parses. And then I can go over the sequences, just as we did in the in the, the first example. So you can easily separate this example into two: one one of them downloading the file up till here, and then a separate one that can read the file from your disk. And then you have three parts: basically, the first that searches, the second that downloads, maybe some of them. And then the last one that can read in the file, and then and then starts the interesting part, right? And then starts the part that you actually do visit something. Any questions here? Uh, not for now. Um, I'll, I think I'll give it a read to know what type of things one can do with uh, with both yeah. of these modules, but. Yeah. So this is basically what I what, what what I managed to put together about biology. Now you have the, the an exercise basically uh, saying that do the same that we have here, and build something slightly more complex. That's sort of the, the the exercise, and you have a special exercise because you need to also show me all kind of other things that the biologist would want to use, and uh, and then we can discuss that uh, in in a video. Okay. All right. uh, Yes, so I think that was about the biology. Now we can, oh, there are, I have a couple of links here that also just for, my, for me mostly, I'm trying to f understand a little bit of these magic words that biologists use. Okay, uh, let's go over also the chemistry part because it's, I think it's very shorter than, than this because I even, even less I know. So here are also a bunch of links just uh, about uh, uh, various uh, things, various libraries for, for chemistry. Okay, articles and uh, other things. Um, let me try, yeah. So I just have these slides and nothing, uh, no example really. Um, we can, uh, so there is this, this uh, let's, let's go over quickly what we have. So there, I, I found this, which is an interesting, page, uh, Python for chemistry, so various things that you need, might need there. Um, this is a, another live, it's a set of tools, apparently, especially for biologists. Okay. Chemical toolbox is that, okay. You just go over and, and, and start figuring out. Okay. I just, sorry, I don't, I couldn't get into any of these uh, myself. Um, again, lack of uh, understanding of the, the subject. Uh, what is this? Uh, okay, so it's an explanation. What is a CT file? Okay, are you familiar with all this uh, as well? Uh, not really, no. Okay. 
So I, I guess uh, this is some file format describing moleculars. Okay, the MDL mol file. Okay, and uh, then I, I guess that the open barbell here has modules to read these file formats. Okay. Um, and I think there was one thing that I sort of thought uh, to show, okay, is that, um, but that's it. I, I don't think that uh, there is anything, okay? So that's the, let me show, look at this one. Um, again, explanation about file formats that you might use. Okay, so modules. Oh, okay, the open open bubble module and this documentation and this pi bell, which is another library for it. So that's it about Python. I'm fortunately I don't have uh, sorry about uh, about uh, chemistry and Python. Um, actually, I even sent some fixes to one of these modules. So that's the nice thing about this, that uh, even though I didn't understand the background, I saw the Python part and I, I, I found some ways to improve them. So I sent some improvements and they were accepted and they got into the code. I don't remember what uh, already it was a year ago or so, but um, uh, it was about uh, something. So that's gonna be an exercise for both you and probably me to create some uh, examples, more examples for the for the chemistry part. So thank you for so far for watching this. Now we're finishing this video, and then uh, you can see that the next chapter we are going to talk about NumPy. Okay, see you. See you.